very easy to, um, to say you have a good culture when you're winning. I think the true test of culture and character is when you go through six games losing, uh, which wasn't too pleasant. And as, as you spend more and more time in the environment, you, you quickly realise um, you know, what, it, what it's about. It's about um, caring for one another and looking after one another and having a genuine interest rather than in, 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 in your teammates' life rather than just their, how, how they're doing from nine to three or nine to four. In, in the long run, it does have benefits on, on the pitch and I think in, when times get hard, you know, you try that a little bit harder. When you, when you have those bonds. If they're good people and they've got good values, it helps if they love the club naturally anyway. So if you've got players coming like Mike has done from the academy, you know, he's known one club in his life, uh, like Maro as well, and it's easier to actually then love what it is that you really represent. And every day I try to remind myself that the energy has to come from you and that actually if you are not on your game and you're a 1% off, what right have you to expect that everybody around you isn't one isn't right as well? And you know, it's about showing an interest in people. Yeah, look, I've been there 14 years now, so it is a lot easier for me to to go back in and, and carry on. So, you know, I, I was part of the, that group that you know came, came put our values together. Um, so I know how important it is for us as a team to have those values. What was different, I think, is the younger boys actually in Newcastle definitely had to say there was almost like a leadership group within those sort of boys from the academy of like 18 to. 22 which which was good um, because you kind of want to know a lot of the time when you're in a team some of the younger boys are quite quiet um, but within that side and then a Newcastle team sort of everyone was pretty close because there was a leadership group for the younger boys and then for, for the older lot so it kind of brought everyone together a, a little bit. If the culture's good in a team it's easy to just fit in really. Um, culture's good at Wasps so it was an easy thing to, to sort of fit into. Most clubs, most environments, like everyone has their own like, individual plan and depending on whether you're one of the fast guys like these guys or one of someone like me who just hits people, um, uh, you focus on different things. Um, so like he, he mentioned it there briefly, like the contacts, um, I think contacts per minute is a big one and like the acceleration into those contacts is again another big one that, that you know the coaches and all the stats decisions look at. So that's, also vitally important. Data, I think, drives our lives now, even off the field. I mean, the guys have talked about kind of more the on-field and there's a connection between the off-field and on-field. And there's working, you know, with the broadcasters. I think a lot of that data, you know, we'd love one day to take more and more onto the screens. Would you use some of that data or would your S&C staff use some of that data in your training programme? In pre-season, a lot of what we did was kind of split up into different groups, backs, forwards, and then within that we had back three centres. And, uh, and tens and nines. And alongside it's a bit of competition as well, you kind of see different speeds and um, yeah, and you can, you can see just how hard people have worked. All the players uh, use it um, every day. It's about massively important in terms of the analysis, uh, making sure you know the other team inside out um, and then you get the stats on you know, what area of the pitch they're kicking. So for me as a back three, for example, I can find out what area of the field they're most likely to do certain kicks, um, which is great for me in terms of my positioning. It's fundamental for us to work with companies like Rico because we can't keep on top of all of that. That's not our core business, but having partners that we can work with who can guide us through some of that, whether it's media partners or, or, or companies like Rico, is, is, is vital. Integrating those new people that come into your squad, does technology play a role in that? Uh, I think. I think it can help in terms of maybe showing them plays, showing them certain moves. So, for example, we've had Blair Cowan come in after the injury list we, um, in recent weeks that we've, we've got. So, I know for a fact that when he came in, they, uh, for forward, the amount of line outs you have, to, you, you have to learn for someone coming through halfway through the season is quite challenging. So, um, they, they did some video work with him, showed him the plays, etc., etc. So. I think technology, as always, is, is, is a massive tool that can, can be used and can be used to aid performance, but I think with, with all these things, I think it's the human contact that's, that's massively important. Um, no matter how much um, you know, video you watch, etc., etc., I think a lot of role players still learn the best when they're out there on the field with their teammates. There's always this, the new thing that comes out um, that people are trying to change. Everyone's looking for that 1%, aren't they? Whether it be with a kit or uh, the technology stuff that we've seen 
and have talked about tonight. So there's always those little things coming out, and you, like John said, um, filter what might work for you or what, what might not. We had a week with Adidas last year in Germany and that was fascinating because they were we were sharing ideas with them and in fact the guys were designing shirts with them as well and saying what worked for them and what didn't work for them which is brilliant. The technology and the detail they go to, it's astonishing. We, we've had quite a focus the last sort of year or so and probably the next year or so on the fan in the stadium. Um, I think looking back over the last kind of 10, 15 years, the thing that's happened in the TV world is just amazing. I mean, the amount of angles you get now, I mean, we'll typically have 15, 16, 17 cameras at a, at a Premiership game. And we've sort of thought a lot about the last 12 months about the fans in the stadium because they're also, um, you know, the lifeblood of our sport and, and you can't lose them. And we need to make sure that there is always a reason to, to be in the stadium as well. I hope we'll get next season or certainly the season afterwards a lot more in interaction between the smartphones and the big screen in the stadium so voting on man of the match things like that is all going to I think become part of the norm and part of the fans experience of, of this great sport and this great league so you know and the players are using it heavily in terms of you know their their sort of use of social media and so forth all of that just amplifies the interest in in this competition which is which is which has got to be good.